Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven Yu here for another modern video. Today we are going to play with a deck that has the best deck name that I've ever seen in any format, I think. We are going to be playing Modern Iceberg, spelled with a B-U-R-G. B-U-R-G as in the colors. So we get the ice portion of the name from the fact that we have a bunch of snow lands as well as permanents like Ice Fang Quaddle and Dead of Winter that care about the number of snow lands control the number of snow lands you control rather and then we get the berg name from the colors of the deck okay a absolutely brilliant goes to show you that deck building is is more than just a deck itself the good name the good name is sometimes the hook uh so essentially we are a four color good stuff control deck that is trying to cast some of the highest quality possible cards that we can and play some of the highest quality lands as well in that, like, we are also going to be an Urza Saga deck. Now, something that has never been legacy legal is Renin 6 alongside Urza's Saga. So you can go and get all of these constructs, let the Urza Saga hit the graveyard, and then plus Renin 6, bring it back, redeploy it, and just go, 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 go. Now, I am a big believer in good mana. And guess what? Arkham's Astrolabe is not legal anymore. Uh, you know, that's just not a card that's around. So we have to try some other things in order to fix this mana. The Navigator's Compass gains you three life when you play it, and you can tap it to turn target land you control into a basic land of the type of your choosing in addition to its other types. So that is going to be kind of one of the things that helps us smooth out our mana base. It's no Arkham's Astrolabe. It's not cantripping but three life is going to help get you out of the early stages of the game against something like burn or a red aggro deck of some kind. Um, we'll see how it performs in practice. Assuming we do get out of the early game, we should be pretty well off versus aggressive decks. We have Renin six to ping off small creatures with its minus ability. We have ice fang Kawaddle to trade. We have unholy heats, assassins, trophies, drown in the locks, snapcasters to bring it back, dead of winter to wipe the board, and Culligan's command to buy back our death touchers and snapcasters again. Um, the card quality is absolutely gross if we can cast them, and there have to be some concessions to that. Um, so if you'll take a look here, this deck is running Fabled Passage, uh, which is a card that, uh, while you might see it in Historic, doesn't really tend to show up in Modern. Um, so it's a Terramorphic Expanse, but if you control four or more lands, you get to untap that land. This does mean that sometimes we're not going to be able to just, like, play a Ragavan on turn one, and, like, that is another way that we can just get mana fixing in all of the colors we need. Now, in addition to everything else that I've talked about, this is also a Luris deck, uh, which is pretty dope. That means you always have a threat, so we can be a little bit threat light. And this also lets you recycle your Bobbles, just like we used to see in Legacy, or your Ragamans, your Ice Fang Bottles, or even your Renin Six. Um, the one thing that I could not figure out is why this deck is playing Legion's End. So this is a two black removal spell. Exile target creature and opponent controls with mana value 2 or less, and all other creatures that player controls with the same name, then that player reveals their hand, exiles all cards with the same name from their hand and graveyard. With like the hand and graveyard part, I was originally thinking like, oh, there's got to be something for, for something like an Uro, but it's CMC 2 or less, and I don't even remember if Uro is legal in this format. I think no. Um, and I don't think token decks are like super, super popular, which is the other thing that came to mind. Uh, so if you know, like, what specifically this is for, please let me know, because um, I'm a little puzzled. Um, otherwise, the sideboard is full of things to kind of let you gear your matchup to whatever you need, whether you need to be fighting counter magic, whether you need to be stopping your opponent's unfair stuff of their own, or whether you need to be answering artifacts out of a deck like, say, Hammer Time. Uh, super pumped up to try this one out. It just has a lot of great cards. I expect to do pretty well this league if our mana is reasonable. I expect that if I lose, it will be because I lose to bad mana or kind of getting overrun in the first two turns before I kind of get a chance to smooth out my mana and uh, kind of get established. Anyway, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That and leaving comments are the easiest ways to support my content for free. If you end up wanting to try this one out or get one of your own decks on the channel, that information, as always, is available in the video description. And by the way, I think this video is dropping on Thanksgiving, so to those of you that celebrate that, you know, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're having a great time with your family, or, you know, if you're having a crappy time with your family, hopefully this video is decent escapism. 
let's battle. Okay, um, so my mana is awkward here. I think this hand is a keep. I can get a turn two Ragavan and then try to use a Drown in the Lock to get it through. I think this is fine. Um, my land from Fabled Passive is just going to enter the battlefield tapped, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll kind of see how this mana base plays out in practice. I guess there's also a world where I just play towards Drown in the Locking early and then play Ragavan later. Ooh. Okay. Ragavan now sucks. Uh, because my, my, my opponent revealed a Chancellor of the Forge, which means they're on that, uh, the, the random slot machine deck list that I probably played yesterday for you all. Um, I forget which way time works right now. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. So, that means my Drown in the Lock is pretty important, whereas rest, a lot of the rest of my stuff isn't. I'm just gonna go ahead and play towards Drown in the Lock, and if I stop my opponent from casting... Or, well, not casting. If I stop my opponent from resolving their Glimpse of Tomorrow, everything else will probably come together over time somehow. Hey, mana fixing. Uh, I've got to just uh, play towards the Drown in the Lock, though. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of poking damage from this 1-1. One, one. At some point... The Renin 6 will start pinging off these things. Um, but not yet. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. There's a problem here. Wait, no, there's not. Mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in the graveyard. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll fetch, and the CMC of the thing I want to counter is zero anyway. Do I want to use a Drown in the Lock to just blow up a token? I don't think so, but it's surprisingly close. Okay. So here's a fetch. I think I just need to play around two turns worth of uh, enablers. Because I think if I don't play around that, I'm just too likely to lose to the second thing that happens here. Um, this card is probably annoying enough that I just... Okay, hold on. Counter target spell with mana value... Oh, no, 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 I can't count that. They've only got two in there. Okay, sure. So that's resolving. So they can use that to loot through some of the crap in their hand. A double Chancellor. So I knew about one of those already. I need something to kind of stabilize the board here. Because um, my opponent has a fair number of permanents. And I just, like, don't have something just thick that can sit in play. I need to grab my red mana here, because I need that for both Ren and Six and Ragavan. Uh, I guess I need to consider whether or not I need to just, like, drown in the lock and take some pressure off of me. The answer might be yes. This is just uh, five damage every turn. Um, doesn't feel great to, like, send this to the graveyard, but I think I'm in a deal-with-one-problem-at-a-time situation. I will play this compass. It will... Gain me more life than Ragavan will. And then I can use this to cast an Ice Fang Coatl in combat if I want. Everything is just so awkward for me right now. Um, I, I can't kind of successfully deploy my spells to stop to start picking away at these tokens because I'm just like kind of behind the curve at this point. And if I do do something like try to use this Ice Fang Coatl to just like trade with one of these tokens in combat, then I open myself up to just, like, the thing happening. And if they have the violent outburst, it still potentially just happens. Oh, fuck, this is just an Omnoth. Uh, I mean, gotta counter that. That card is absurd. Um, but this means I am now just absolutely pants down to my opponent. Uh, yeah, they don't need to attack with the plant. Uh, anyway, to my opponent just playing one of their Cascade effects, I'm out of counter spells. All right, um, I have a Field of Ruin. I can play Renin 6, return a land, and represent the fact that I still have a counterspell. 
Okay. I, I wish I could be pinging these, but again, my opponent has three power, so that's not really going to put me in an okay place. All right, so we're going to turn this field of ruin into a basic forest. And now that it's a forest, I'll make this plus grab back that fabled passage. And now I'm just kind of banking on the fact that my opponent, like, will just continue to attack with onboard stuff and play around a counter spell. Um, because I'm playing like I have one. Um, at five mana, though, my opponent does just have a decent play. Um, I guess I'm looking to draw uh, Dead of Winter and wipe the board, reduce my permanence count, and then, like, get a Snapcaster Mage, counter uh, a thing that comes in. All right. Right in six's loyalty goes down from this attack. And my mana's not smooth enough to just, like, cantrip through this at end of turn. Okay, that is a hard cast wave sifter. Yeah, I, I am absolutely falling behind here. Uh, the difference between Navigator's Compass and Arkham's Astrolabe is uh, rough here. All right, so I am straight up going to main phase this Ice Fang Quaddle and see what I draw. I just think I need to know if I am drawing a Dead of Winter. <laughs> Fuck, it's the fourth compass. Uh, I'm super dead. I feel just so, so absolutely behind the curve here. Is the Renin 6 worth killing a token here? Sure. The token and the land are worth similar amounts. I'm still representing a um, Drown in the Lock. I am not going to stop representing that if at all possible. Because, like, as soon as my opponent goes for it, I, I am dead. I'm just trying to stay in this position where... My opponent might not need to go for it to give me time to actually find a real answer to it. Also, I just realized that I have a cryptic command in my deck that I might need, like, multiple navigator's compasses to cast. Okay, so this is five mana. Is this just going to be the season Pyromancer? Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, so... I, I am really just drawing to Dead of Winter here. I need to wipe that and then hope that my opponent does not actually have um, a cascade effect that can just like shuffle in their lands and clues and uh, just body me. Uh. All right. So I can go three mana and put this Luris into my hand. And then I can still play one of these while representing a counter spell. Let's make sure I'm not dead on board. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. I am not dead on board. I am in bad shape. I'm not technically dead. I'm flirting with the line of technically dead. Not quite there. So here's 11 incoming damage, putting me to 4. Not the best uh, position for me. Uh, then again, like I sort of have coincidentally just drawn all four of my navigator's compasses. Like, the card's not great. All right, as far as outs that I'm playing towards, I need to respect my ability to draw Cryptic Command and tap down my opponent's team. So I think I'm going to grab the other island here. All right, uh, land. Okay, not technically dead, right? So I go land. I'll turn this Field of Ruin into something that can help cast Luris. Like a Plains here. I will cast the Loris. I will cantrip via Ice Fang Kowaddle. And see if that gets me anywhere. That gets me to a Snapcaster Mage. Um, I think at this point I need to just give up and grab this life in case something goes wrong. Um, I, th I think I am just so very, very close to just losing to regular combat damage. This kind of pseudo puts me at... Um, well, life. Because, like, I have three from Loris. Yeah, and my opponent has the violent. Oh, okay. Neat. I just kind of assumed this was one of those things that you could only activate at sorcery speed, but that is instant as well. That's pretty dope. Alright, opponent. Are you going to cast a thing that makes me cry, or are we just going to play the grind game? 
Oh, they're straight up just going to hard cast a Chancellor. Oh, oh, okay. They're floating their mana first. Sure. That's fine. They cast Glimpse of Tomorrow, and now I am dead. Wait, what is this one? One or more tokens would be created under your control. Those tokens plus that many squirrels are created. Oh my god, this is amazing. Why wasn't this in my deck when I played? Straight up get savaged by squirrels. Like your colony gardens trigger that. Is it one or more tokens? Yeah, it's any sort of tokens. Neat. So that counts things like clues too. Uh, yeah, okay. So just in case you haven't seen the ridiculousness of this before, I'm just going to let this play out for a second. So my opponent, just like, look at that squirrel count going. So the Chancellor of the Forge happens. They get a 1-1 one, one hasty creature token for every creature that they control, right? Okay. Now they can Goblin Dark Dwellers and do it again. Um, it is a May, so they don't have to. Yeah, and they have opted not to here, as I am just, like, currently rather dead. Uh huh. Yeah, so all of these have haste, so this alone is enough haste damage to kill me. Uh, well, okay, like, my opponent has something else they want to cast. Oh, okay. They they very much have me dead here. Do we want to see what it flips into, just for the lols, just to see if Magic Online crashes? Okay, no, they're, they're, they're choosing not to Cascade. They have just turned everything into something that has one more power, and my life total goes rather negative. GG's. Okay, uh, what do I have for this deck? I don't have something like a Chalice on zero, because I have my own bobbles. I would definitely like these Dead of Winters. I probably need to be playing these counter spells. The EE on zero is pretty reasonable. Uh, let's see, Cascade reveals the cards from the top of the library, so you're not casting it from your library, so that doesn't stop that. Um... Do I want legions and four tokens? I'm not sure that I do. Um, I I feel like I'm just like not well built for this matchup. Because I I'm not great at controlling things that make more than one body in a lot of cases. Like I really have to draw a dead of winter. I think I'm gonna go down on this cryptic command because it's slow and hard to cast. I kind of need to bring Yeah, I just I just don't have a fat butt in my deck. I don't have something like a Merktide Regent that just gets to like sit there and go like, hey, you can't really attack well through this. Uh, I'm not sure how well I'm going to keep up with my opponent's stuff accordingly. Um, I don't really need a Soul Guide Lantern. That can go out. Yeah, I wonder if my plan is like win via large Urza Saga Construct tokens. That's where that's where I get my fat butt. Don't maybe go down an Assassin's Trophy since I'm bringing in an EE and a Dead of Winter. Probably need the Unholy Heat. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. Maybe I don't need to bring back my creatures if I get like Urza Sagas going and I can cut that. I've, I'm not not super confident in my ability to win this matchup based on what I saw in game one. It just did not feel good. Turn one Ragavan. I mean, like, yes, card is very, very busted. Will probably get banned in at least one format. Might already be banned in Legacy by the time this video goes up. They, uh, we, we know Legacy bans are incoming, and Eternal Weekend just happened, slash is happening right now for me. Uh, so, you know, see what the turnaround time on that decision is. I assume it's, uh, probably not going to have happened yet, but, you know, you never actually know. Okay, no action from my opponent. Fantastic. So, I'll get my two damage in, and I will actually fix my mana. Um, just like play out these compasses right now. I think I'm good with that. My opponent doesn't really have too many lands in Graveyard yet. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and take my life gain slash mana fixing here. The difference between, like, this card and Arkham's Astrolabe is so apparent. Like, I didn't just, like, cantrip and just stay card neutral. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So my opponent will fetch and do something that increases their number of permanents in play. And then I can potentially just, like, drown in the lock whatever they do to get it out of the way of my Ragavan. Okay. Nope. They're just, uh, they're just doing a little research over there. Doing some investigating. So this gives them 
Two tokens. Yeah, I can potentially just hit some cool stuff out of their deck, though. I could straight up just hit something of the card quality of, like, a Fury and think about whether or not I want to hard cast that. My Drown and the Locks are now going to be on versus most of the things that they can cast. Alright, so they go to 10. Foundation Breaker. Um, I think I need to hold up this Drown in the Lock, but I can just evoke this and use that to blow up a clue. That's... That's probably worth something. If I had one more mana, um, I would go ahead and like be willing to hard cast that, but I am not willing to junk the Drown in the Lock at this time. Or sorry, I am not willing to drop holding up Drown in the Lock at this time. Okay. That's a, that's a turn off from the Ragavan. Unless I just Drown in the Lock that token to continue hitting in. I could just, like, end of turn, play a snap. Hmm. Four cards in Graveyard. That's four cards in Graveyard, so I can't actually counter this. Um, so that is going to eat my Ragavan, unfortunately. All right. So I could just play a Snapcaster Mage to continue my beats. I think I need to do that. Like, I don't have, like, an Urza Saga or Equivalent right now. I think I just need to, uh, hello! Anyway, I think I need to just, uh, keep the pain train going and either deal, deal two damage to my opponent or cause them to lose a plant. I am good with either way that that comes down. All right, there's my Urza Saga. The question is, do I want to put Luris into my hand? I think so. I think it is safe or safe adjacent to do so right now. I still hold up a Drown in the Lock. It costs me a treasure token to do so, but it's going to be very hard for me to put the Luris into my hand after this turn. Because I'm going to have my mana tied up between Drown in the Lock and Urza's Saga um, kind of every turn beyond this one. All right. So there is the Shardless Agent. That will cascade into the Glimpse which I will just go ahead and counter. All right, good stuff. Ooh, a Ragavan. Um, yep, I'm pretty good with just holding up Drown in the Lock, and if my opponent doesn't do anything, I'll, uh, I'll just make a token. I am good with trading Snapcaster for Shardless Agent. I'll see if my opponent wants to do that, because I can potentially just bring the Snapcaster back with Flutterus later. Yeah, so my opponent does not like the block. I guess I can play this Ragavan, right? So that plays into Fury a little bit. I think I'm okay with that. I am in a Urza Saga activation or Drown in the Lock activation, not both sort of setup here. I need five mana to get both. All right, opponent's got two cards. I think I'm just good with that happening. I would much rather just have the Urza Saga construct token. Right, my opponent junked a Wave Sister. Wave Sifter, rather. Okay, no attacks, because my opponent knows that I have this big, big. It's a 3-3. Three, three. A Maelstrom Pulse. Okay, so the question now is, like, do I drop Drown in the Lock in order to make another Urza Saga Construct token? I don't have anything that actually nets me a mana, right? No, I do not. Opponent says, this Navigator's Compass idea is interesting. I am... Un unsure about this. I think I'm just going to uh, not drop Drown in the Lock for as long as possible. Alright. I'll pick up a Bobble. I think I'm just going to cycle this immediately. I, I don't think I want to attack this turn. Ooh, okay, my opponent is drawing a Glimpse, so they can just suspend that. Uh, so clarifying my previous position, I don't think I want to attack with the Construct this turn. I'm going to attack with a Snapcaster and the Ragavan, though, because those can be brought back from the graveyard later. I don't mind those being traded. Yep. Fine with all that. I, I hate that I have to just, like, live in fear here. I, okay, okay. I mean, I, I get to stay relatively safe with Double Drown in the lock, but I, I, I don't have the land drops I need. I need something like a Ren and Six to allow me to just keep hitting my land drops. Um, because without that, I, I can't deploy these cards. I assume this is going to be suspending. 
Yeah, so this is suspending the glimpse. So I need to counter one more glimpse. These lists usually play three glimpses. So I know one's here, I know one's here. There's one more in the deck that I, I have to like be aware of. Once that last one is gone, I can just start doing like Lurza, Lurza, Luris Bobble shenanigans. And I'll pull ahead pretty quickly once I can do that. My Navigator's Compass fixes my mana. Um, but I can't really do anything else. Oh, uh, weird. Okay. That, uh, that's Recursive Destruction. I'm going to play that out. Fine with playing it out on zero. Am I the beat down now? Sure. I'll kind of force my opponent to do some jump blocking with these, because my Urza Saga Construct token is probably going to die to my Engineered Explosives at some point anyway. I don't know, maybe this just results in me getting pecked for two a couple of times in a way that's not actually profitable. Five, so there's going to be like a Fury. Oh, it's an Ingot Chewer. All right, fine. Turn that into a Swamp. And go ahead and counter the Ingot Chewer. I don't really want to do this. But I think I got to, like, oh, nice. I think I just have to be able to sit on this EE and these drown in the locks for as long as possible and just kind of like keep things playing safe. Glimpse is just slowly ticking down. Uh, the issue is like next turn, if my opponent casts this glimpse from exile and then casts another thing afterwards, it's super awkward for me. Speaking of super awkward for me. Yeah, I, I, I think I am supposed to counter this again. Um, but again, just like not having access to additional mana here is rough i'm just choked so the play pattern that we're experiencing here is kind of something like you see against living end where if living end makes it to the end game they can just start casting big dumb things that are in their deck rather than just like having a couple of living ends that you have to deal with a renin six um i mean that's very good and play that grab Prismatic Vista or Urza's Saga. And then use that to hold up Drown in the Lock. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're good with that. Alright, there's the Renin 6. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the Prismatic Vista here. Good with attacks. We trade Plant Token for 2 Loyalty on Renin 6. That's fine. Because then if my opponent attacks with this... Then I get to crack back for four or potentially more if I Luris and then Bobble. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, this is a bit of a strange game. Um, this is quite fun. I'm gonna fetch. I'll grab my Swamp. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. My opponent is just preemptively floating their mana. Sure. I thought my opponent was just gonna like cast another one in response to me fetching, and I was just like going to get absolutely got. Now, they can do something like Violent Outburst right here. Uh, it is an instant. Oh, nice. I, I, I got a time walk because my opponent tapped their mana uh, to like try to have the floated mana. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, my opponent realizes that they cannot really attack. All right. Um, can I kill my opponent? I can pulse this and hit for four. All right. I'm going to play Urza Saga. I could also play Luris dash Ragavan. Or maybe play Luris and then Bobble is better. All right, so we make that a swamp. Play Luris. Cast this. This brings my creature up to a 5-5. Five, five. This makes the block obligatory or my opponent dies to the Ren and 6 ping. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this line. Okay, so my opponent does go ahead and take the block there. Uh, now, how do I want to do this? Do I just want to ping my opponent? I think I do just want to ping my opponent. The lands are cool, but I th think this game... Oh, shit, 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 shit. Um, I'm supposed to crack that. Um, but I think this game's pretty close to over. Um, the bobble timing doesn't matter too much. Okay, yeah, that's fine. 
So my opponent will get to loot some things away, but it should be pretty hard for them to actually go off this turn. They would need to play like red land into a violent outburst. Oh, I guess uh, going into shardless agent could work as well. All right. So. Oh, they board one out. Ah, that is a. Uh... Oh, it, or the last one is in their hand or they just discarded it. Yeah, they just discarded it, I think. All right, this is a 5-5 five five right now. I can just, like, immediately turn it back into a 5-5. Five five. What's what's your... Okay. There's a Misty Rainforest. Sure, sure, sure. I'll draw my card. Okay. So I can Maelstrom Pulse away these two tokens. Or I can ping those to death. Um, go ahead and just cast this. Plus, grab another Urza Saga. Play an Urza Saga. Maelstrom Pulse those tokens. I'll make a large idiot. I don't think I want to crash in with Luris. Well, I don't know. Maybe I just want to take these bodies out of play. Yeah, the Luris doesn't matter anymore with, like, Ren and Six going. I'm 100% fine with just uh, junking these. Oh, I should have played that Bobble. Not that it matters. But I should have played the Bobble. All right. I'll play a bobble. I've activated this. I'm just going to go ahead and cycle through these now. Call it a turn. And then I imagine I get there on my next turn. Unholy Heat can't go to the dome, but that that will that's enough to take any blockers out of the way. I think we're good. All right. I will go ahead and activate this. Uh, no, I don't want to tap that land. Go ahead and activate this one. And those into six sixes. I'll, uh, you know what? I'll pick up another navigator's compass. Just let those, <clears throat> excuse me, just let those things sit on the battlefield and crash in for 14. Oh, opponent's got something. Oh, there's some elemental creature tokens. Sure it would be a shame if, uh, someone incinerated them. Turn that island into another one. Oh my god, okay, so I have to do this again. Uh, this deck is slow. Um, part of that is my unfamiliarity with it, but, like, I had to play draw go for a very long time with Drown in the Lock. Um, so I'm pretty likely to just time out here, unfortunately. Um, uh, game was super cool, though. Like, I'm very happy that I, uh, ended up winning that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I am just whacking Submit. Okay, so I have an opening hand that has a Ragavan. I kind of think I need to just go ahead and keep that. Hope this Ragavan can kind of get going and actually get in there. Um, I kind of have to get aggro, and maybe I'm supposed to mulligan to an Urza Saga hand with less than five minutes remaining on the clock. Like, that's very possible. Okay. Oh no, my opponent is revealing multiple Chancellor of the Forges, uh, which essentially means that my whole like Ragavan start idea has been absolutely neutralized. Um, bad news for Phil fans. Um, yeah. Uh, that means my mana is just absolutely abysmal in addition to kind of everything that's going on here. Like I have to get Navigator's Compass to try and save this. So now I have to play towards, um, like, Drown in the Lock countering my opponent's stuff. And I don't think I can just play this, like, draw go, I sit on Drown in the Lock game when I have sub five minutes on the clock for this game. I also don't have enough uh, mana here for, like, Luris to come in and just save the day. I think I'm donezo. Maybe I should have mulligan this hand. Ugh. Fuck. <laughs> oh, that's so bad for me. That's so bad for me. Holy moly. Okay. So, I now am being pressured, and my mana base has just been absolutely devastated by an evoke card. Okay. Hello, it is Urza's Saga here to save the day. Um, so, uh, I'm at F6. Hands up here. Whatever my opponent does this turn is, uh, is what they do. You know, whatever happens, happens. Okay. Not dead this turn. Good news for me. Um, I am taking two more. Down to 16. A Ren and six. Sure cannot cast that right now. Um, but that's fine. 
Well, it's more like fine, but like, you know. My Ursa Saga token is gonna start out as a 1-1. One, one. Alright, don't worry, I'll just cast my Drown in the... Oh. Oh. No, I won't. Alright, so here's the glimpse. Oh my god. Um, so, this is just two three three double strikers, okay? Like, that means the next turn I'm getting hit for 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage, and I will have two two twos. Um, I think I need to draw, like, a Dead of Winter. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna have enough snow permanence, right? Like, that's a limiting factor here. Ooh. So, how am I getting out of this? Is it gonna be a Wave Sifter? Yeah. So, I think I need to activate Field of Ruin here and increase my number of snow permanents so that Dead of Winter can be an out. I'll, uh, Take out the red mana source here. Um, I'll grab black so I can actually cast a Dead of Winter. Alright, so there's another snow land. Can I make it out of this turn cycle? So assuming I block or otherwise get rid of a Fury, I take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage and go to 4. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can stay alive a turn by chump blocking. That's not great. So do I pick up a compass for three life or a bobble for another redraw? I think it's a bobble for another redraw. So then I will play my land. Yeah, but I, I won't take this redraw on my opponent until after. Um, um Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. They don't have any one mana green cards. I guess I can keep this a 2-2 for a little while. Oh. Yeah, so that destroys this construct. I'll, uh, go ahead and do this. Oh, there's a Teferi coming. That's, uh, that's sure a card that shuts off a Drown in the lock, huh? Yeah, I absolutely respect the attack with the, uh, the plant token here. Absolutely. GG's. Uh, that was really fun. Alright, um, we are paired against another Lurus deck for this round. Um, turn... Uh, and super weird. Like, I really wish I had more lands, and one of these is going to enter tapped, which is kind of awkward. Um, I'm on the play. I can just go like, uh, uh, uh. So, like I have this redundant dead Ragavan. Um, maybe this hand is fine. It's just, uh. There's so many different types of deck that I could be playing against here that it makes it hard to tell what I need to be doing, like, in terms of my mulligans. Like, Luris could be Burn, it could be Hammer Time, it could be some control nonsense like what I'm doing right here. And without having a clear indication of what sort of archetype I'm playing against, it's hard to know. Um, but I'm going to hope that one of these three cards that I've moved to the left side of my hand here is going to be good enough. Sure. All right. So that's going to happen. I'll just grab a mountain. It unfortunately enters tapped. I will play my Urza Saga. Do I dash this Ragavan? Trade Ragavan for Esper Sentinel? There's a lot of ways to play out this turn. I can just, like, play Navigator's Compass and then... Play run and six next turn minus and kill it that way. Yeah, I think I need to. I think I need to get this run and six in play. I'm gonna go ahead and pay. I, I think I just need to get this card into play because I am either going to need it to continue to hit my land drops or to ping off my opponent's small threats. So kind of my dream curve of. Fetch tap land on turn one into Ragavan and Navigator's Compass on turn two has been disrupted, and I lose a lot of power in this hand accordingly. Oof. Uh, now I have lost the red and six that I took a, essentially took a time walk on myself to set up. What is this spice? Okay. Uh, call again command. Not a great draw here. So now I am going to lose this Urza's Saga without having 
gained a token out of it, or maybe gaining one token if I sack the treasure to do it. Uh, that's rough. And good news, I have, like, intrigued... Oh, wow. Uh, I have intrigued everyone who has seen this deck list so far. So, like, that's potentially good, right? <laughs> All right, uh... Officially sort of in the, the danger zone here, so to speak. All right, um, Unholy Heat is an okay draw. I think I will go ahead and just take my Construct. I need something to hold the ground for a little while. I have one land here. I think I have to grab a Bobble and just immediately cycle it, try to work towards getting uh, some land drops. Uh, this game has just, like, n ugh, has just not worked out on any angle. Um, just kind of between my opponent's Thoughtseize and, like, their Esper Sentinel, uh, every everything has just kind of worked out so that I don't quite have the mana to do what I need to do. And that was one of the things I talked about in the deck tag, right? Like, if I can deploy my card, oh my god, a third. If I can deploy my cards, they're pretty good. Okay, so this is either a bluff or I'm about to be dead. So I am going to hope that this is a bluff. Narrator's voice. It was not a bluff. So now that that thing is on... Oh my god. Fuck! Fuck! Okay, uh... We're gonna... We're gonna go ahead and move to the next game, folks. What do we have for hammer time? I guess... Just any, any removal spell is reasonable here. I will play the Force of Vigors. I will play any anything and everything that removes. We're good with it. I don't think I want uh, the Graph Digger's Cage, though, for Loris. Um, so I'll go Cryptic out. I think I will go ahead and go Soul Guide Lantern out. Holy hell, I have a lot of removal here. How, how deep do I go? Like, I think my Ragavans kind of suck. They're just going to be brick walled. Am I good with committing to just winning with three copies of Urza Saga? Yes. Feels like yes. I don't think I can cut any Navigator's Compasses. I think my deck just does not work without that additional mana fixing. Yeah, at this point, all my cards are pretty good. Uh, maybe I do something like that and just kind of split the difference a little bit. I am legitimately not sure in terms of sideboarding here. Like, every card is basically good, I just need to be able to cast them. Is why I super, super, super died last game. Okay, how do I feel about this? It's just, a, it's four lands, two unholy heats. Uh, I don't feel great on this, honestly. But I think I probably just need to keep it. I have... Three removal spells here. I have Lurus as a potential threat. I have a lot of top decks that are just going to kill something in one form or another. I think I'm good with it. Yeah, your Memnite is fine. Ornithopter is fine. I'll go ahead and uh, pick up a red source here to start things off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can, uh, we can work with that broken card. Absolutely. I'll deploy my Ren and Six and just immediately send Memnite to its grave. I believe deploying the Ren and Six is better than just trying to force a Vigor to permanence. Like, Ren and Six will get, at minimum, two permanents worth of value. Yeah, Stoneforge is fine right now. Like, if that just gets a Cauldra, I just unholy heat that. Oh, it picked up the Colossus Hammer. Okay. I just need to unholy heat both of these permanents. That means I grab Prismatic Vista. I fetch my second red source here. Get rid of that Stoneforge. 100% willing to just use a card to get rid of an Ornithopter right now. Like, this, this Ren and Six will take over the game. I have Force of Vigor next turn. I can just hard cast it. Uh, hold on. I do have two basic forests, right? I do have two basic forests. I could take out something like a Colossus Hammer and a Spring Leaf Drum or something like that. Alright, are you going to grow out of range of a 1-1? You are. That's fine. Oh, 
Now what? Ooh. Sure. All right. So. Ping, kill Memnite. Memnite, let Ren and Six die. Then bring it back with Lurus a bit later. Sounds fine. Land. Compass. Grab my life. And Lurus to hand. Oh, okay. So, an issue with... Oh, no, no, no. no. I have the compass, so that's where I get my second black. Things are okay. Just gets sort of wild if my opponent gets a hammer in play this turn. Okay. Uh, oh, no. So, this keeps my... Ren and Six from going to the graveyard and me bringing it back with Lurus. Huh. That's, uh... This was a f scenario I did not foresee. Uh... Yeah. And now the smith grows to a 3-3. Three, three. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so I have Luris Bobble. Luris Bobble is totally cool. Uh, hold on. Can I activate this Field of Ruin? Uh, actually, do I want to? Because I blow up a land, then I give my opponent an untapped mana. No, I probably don't want to do that. Just, like, turn that into a swamp. Bobble you. Okay, great. You're drawing a land. Play Luris, rebobble, bobble you, still drawing a land. Now I get two redraws to like maybe draw something like an unholy heat. Okay. Um Snapcaster Force of Vigor is definitely a thing that I can do. Okay, my opponent put their own Luris to hand. Um their Luris is currently scarier than my Luris. We don't have a counter spell. I assume my opponent crashes in for five, but they're, they're thinking about it. No, okay. All right, another compass. How am I doing my turn? I have Snapcaster Force of Vigor. I think I just need to like replay this bobble. I think I need to, okay, Ornithopter is a fine thing you can hit. I think I need to just hold up six mana with Snapcaster. So that I can Snapcaster Force of Vigor if I need to. Um, but I also get a chance at a redraw here. Or a Drown in the Lock. That is not a Drown in the Lock. It is another draw that I can use to find a Drown in the Lock, though. It's also just something that um, helps take pressure off of the board. Yeah, so I'm good with this. I'll go ahead and fetch. I'll grab my island. We'll deploy the Ice Fang. Okay, that is not the Drown in the Lock that I was looking for, unfortunately. So we're gonna... We're gonna have to grind a little bit. This means that my opponent has some pretty reasonable lines here. Okay, my opponent is straight up just casting the Lurus, which hopefully I can just remove on my turn. I can just, like, cast a Memnite. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and Field of Ruin. Um, doing this mostly to help fix my mana a little bit more. Want another blue? I want another blue. Okay. Oh, yeah, now that I've done that, I can actually just turn this into a forest for a second. And then... Okay, all right, it's all coming together. All right, that is a removal spell for a Lurus, which is absolutely fantastic for me. Okay. So let's just kind of piecewise do this. Goodbye, Lurus. Okay, they still have more planes. I will go ahead and cast an Ice Fang Kawadal from the graveyard here. All right. Um... Oh, okay, yeah, my, my opponent is, is done with me. I don't think this game is over, because they can, like, randomly get in some good Colossus Hammer hits. Um, but the tide has absolutely turned in my favor. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad concession. Uh, okay, yeah. that uh, Those sets of cards would have uh, kind of tilted things over the edge. Uh, very much agree with past me boarding out the Ragavans after kind of seeing how this game played out. Yeah, I I wonder if this Snapcaster Mage is just too slow. And the Snapcaster Mage gets a little bit worse if my opponent is playing some graveyard hate. Yeah, I th 
I think just for like tempo reasons, I'm going to go ahead and board back in a Drown in the Lock and an Assassin's Trophy just to have a few more things that interact with my opponent faster. Because I think if I get to the end game and I start doing like my Urza Saga, Lurus BS, um, that I'm pretty okay with where things are at. I have to make it there. Uh, this does mean I am pretty threat light. I'm looking to win via Concession or Urza's Saga. They're, uh, they're going to be my two primary win conditions here. All right, um, I have three lands in my opening hand. I have the ability to fix my mana. I have a run and six to keep hitting land drops or ping small stuff. Um, this is absolutely a keep. We'll see if my opponent can get really far ahead of me on turns one and two, though. Like if I get to the point that um, my run and six can't just like minus and kill stuff um, because like there's too much pressure on board already, that's not great for me. Uh, rather than playing Navigator's Compass, I am just going to go ahead and hold up Unholy Heat. I, I don't want to just get got here. All right, uh, that is a Stoneforge Mystic. It uh, unsurprisingly grabs Colossus Hammer. Oh, straight up no attack, just ab absolute no chances. Um, I don't know what my opponent is playing around there with no attack. Um, so I'm going to kill that Stoneforge. Then go ahead and... Fetch a forest, grab the Renin 6, minus that, kill Memnite. So I am going to have to take a turn off. I can't just like immediately cast this Culligan's Command, uh, but it is going to be very good in the not too distant future. Ooh, a prismatic ending. Very nice. All right, so I am always playing Urza Saga. And I can't Culligan's Command, so I'm always playing Navigator's Compass. So now I have either Unholy Heat or Ice Fang Coatl available. Um, there's going to be some weird things that can happen where my opponent can potentially, like, play around in Unholy Heat pretty well by just, like, equipping... Oh, God. Um, by just equipping things at certain times, like when I tap down to play this Ice Fang Coatl. I think I am just going to have to utilize my mana. All right. So I turn this into an island. And I get my cantrip in with this while I can. Force of Vigor. Oh, I don't mind that at all. Okay. So. So there's some choices I can make here. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I can get second forest and just blow up both of my opponent's Urza Sagas and gain an absurd amount of value that way. And then my own Urza Saga, another turn down the line, will allow me to cast my Culligan's Command when I get, uh, what is it, Navigator's Compass or whatever it's called. My, my one mana, not Arkham's Astrolabe. All right, Forest. There's very much a world where this is not the correct line, but it's... It's double sinkhole. If it's bad, it can't be that bad, right? Oh, yeah, that was that was enough to straight up get the concession from our opponent. See, I told you, YouTube, I told you we could win by concession if we boarded out all of our threats. GG's. Okay, um, so this is round three. We're playing against another Luris deck. If I fetch green or black mana, I'm still missing the other one. So my first play with this hand is a turn three Culligan's Command, other than just a Soul Guide Lantern to cycle. Um, I'm not sure how good I feel about this hand. Uh, this hand has mana problems. I, th I think I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this one, especially when I'm on the play. I just have hands that are going to look like this one. Um, absolutely. Is Fabled Passage... Yeah, Fabled Passage is fine here. I do have four lands. All right. So we'll Vista... Grab ye old snow-covered mountain. Drop the hottest monkey pirate to ever see play. And, uh... Okay, so we are playing against Hammer Time again. Um, so my start is rather weak versus Hammer Time as of right now. Is my opponent's just gonna play, like, an Asper Sentinel or a Memnite or something, and then I'm gonna just, like, raid with that body. Which is really not exactly where I want to be. Um, kind of is what it is. I did not want to draw more land there. 
Since I have a second Ragavan, I will 100% just trade for the Esper Sentinel here. Um, not the best, but it's going to keep me from giving my opponents with that Esper Sentinel later, and I just get to play out another one right here anyway. Um, because I have so many reasonable three mana plays, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to play the Prismatic Vista. I'm not going to probably fetch with it yet, because there's a bunch of different draws that I can get that sort of change what I need to be fetching, because I have like Drown in the Lock to think about, I have things like Maelstrom Pulse and Assassin's Trophy to be thinking about. Alright, what do you reveal? A Portable Hole. That's unfortunate for me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and not fetch here. Removal spell would be gas. Uh, that's a land. All right. I'm going to crash in with this Ragavan. It may or may not get in there. Like, my opponent has a portable hole, which can just answer this, but they are probably just going to trade the body. Yep. So I will go land. I'll fetch. Grab a swamp here. I will put my Lurus into my hand. And call it a turn. Actually, do I have a second swamp in this deck list? Uh, yes, I do have a second swamp in this deck list. Okay, so my opponent played a Springleaf Drum and a Pure Steel Paladin while I was checking that. That's fine. Uh, okay. Gary. Uh, portable Hole is CMC 2 or less. Uh, so I guess, I guess we're just in, like, bobble time now. A Fabled Passage... Grab the other Swamp. Play Lurus. I could Ragavan instead. I think I need the interaction, though, because, like, I know the hammer is incoming. This... I know two hammers are incoming. This at least gives me a chance to draw, like, an Unholy Heat. That's, uh... That's another land, though. That is most certainly another land. My opponent can make a Construct here. Um... Fetch a hammer. They can then attach that for free, draw a card, tap this construct token to put another hammer into play. Okay, you following? Basically, it's not good for me. Now, this is a chump blockable creature currently, um, but I'm pretty dead next turn. So my opponent can cast these equipment as though they had flash. Um, so they are trying to surprise me here by casting the second one. I have to jump block with this Loris, and then, I don't know, draw something absolutely insane. I don't know what that is, because I don't have the Force of Virtues in game one. Okay, alright, message received. Just ab absolute fuck you, Phil, from my deck. Ugh, alright. Uh, so basically, I think I boarded in just about every removal spell I had access to last time around. Um, I went Ragavans out, Soul Guide Lantern out, and what did I do for my last two? I, I think I, I boarded differently for games one and two, and then I think I boarded out Snapcasters. Um, I think this Assassin's Trophy ended up in my deck. But, ah, I missed the Cryptic Command. There we go. Okay, yeah, this, uh, this seems reasonable. Okay, um, I have two lands here. And this actually does fix my mana. I have three removal spells. I think I will go ahead and just keep this. I think I just play my compass on one to use the mana, and this allows me to unholy heat next turn. Uh, but it's possible I'm supposed to just take my tapped fetch land on one and have two mana available on turn two instead. But if I, like, the fabled passage would require me to make a choice immediately. And there's some times where I'm not quite ready to make that choice yet. It matters a little bit less because, like, I have the Navigator's Compass that is allowing me to cast Unholy Heat, but if that gets answered by something like a Portable Hole, then I do have to kind of make my choice sooner rather than later. And uh, that is a Pure Steel Paladin. So super awkwardly, my opponent... Well, no, I guess, I guess they don't have mana currently. I'll fetch... Probably want to get something that has one pip of like run and six green, maybe. Then we'll turn this into a mountain and we'll go ahead and unholy heat that paladin out of here. Okay, um, I can't currently activate this field of ruin. 
I am going to take this turn to put the Luris into my hand. I, I think I can take this tempo hit now. I have a whole bunch of answers in hand. Uh, I, I will Assassin's Trophy that land if I at all can afford to do so. Uh, which it seems like I can. Ooh, I've also... Oh, I also just have, like, Field of Ruins sitting in play. I could just do that instead. Yeah, so let's just do that instead. Do I want to get a green or black land? Yes, I think I want to get a black land. Then I can cast Assassin's Trophy in this turn cycle, and that does work towards me casting the Luris later, even if I end up having to EE away my own Navigator's Compass. And maybe I'm like, thinking a little too deeply here about, like, that possible timeline where, like, I end up blowing up my own compass. All right, we'll the Assassin's Trophy the shit out of that then. Okay, a Stoneforge Mystic is happening. All right, and that is a hammer. Okay, uh, definitely was not thinking too deeply then. Sure. That can go. So let's take out this land. And I'll have to do something to answer either the Stoneforge or the Hammer. I can make that decision later. I'm going to get a new Uzi What's It next turn. I think I'm just ignoring my Urza Saga Construct tokens for right now. I can EE. This is a little awkward. I think I'm going to Legion's End to just get rid of this Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, so they have Colossus Hammer, Lurus. The Gardas, the Garda, Chorus, Colossus Hammer, Silent Clearing, Cigar, Cigar. Okay, so they have this. That's fine. I am going to play an EE on one. Again, I, I just need a little more mana than what I have, and I'm about to lose one of my mana sources, unfortunately. Well, shit, so much for recycling that. That is a, that is a very punishing draw. Okay, yep, yep, yep. So this will be Luris. My opponent does not get value out of Luris by playing anything from the graveyard immediately. So that's that's the good news. I get to pulse their Luris. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so I'm floating mana. I'm gonna assume that I do need this. I pulse their Luris, and then I have Unholy Heat available for their next creature that they play. Okay, that's just immediately cycling their land, getting a little bit deeper. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Uh, okay. What am I doing with my turn? If I play Luris, I don't have a zero drop that I can just get out of my graveyard. I'm just trying to decide if I want to give my opponent a card here off Esper Sentinel. I don't think I do. Ooh, hello. I think that means I'm just chilling. Potentially just get a bobble with this next one and give me something to do with my Luris. Yep, cycle away, friend. Oh, nope, that is Inkbot animating. Sure. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Fancy. So I think I want... This uh, doesn't give them trample right now. It doesn't. So I think I will just answer that in combat with Ice Fang Kawaddle rather than get attacked for a bunch by Esper Sentinel afterwards. All right, so both are coming in. I'll, I guess, turn my Urza Saga into an island. Play the Ice Fang. I do have my three snow-covered lands to do the thing that I want to be doing here. A Drown in the Lock. That's not bad. So I'll do my Murdering. I take one, and then my opponent will re-equip to one of their creatures. Oh, they don't have Metalcraft. Nice. Wonder if they are supposed to uh, take a redraw there in order to try and get that equipped. Uh, okay. Do I drown in the lock immediately? I don't think so. I think I try to get an artifact uh, token into play this turn. I have a bit of a tenuous hold on this game. Like, I am ahead currently, but the margins are extremely small. Fuck. That is quite good in this position. I can just get another Navigator's Compass. That's not the end of the world. Am I making a Construct token? Or am I... I don't want to give my opponents cards here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a mountain. 
At this point, I will go ahead and just fire off a removal spell on that. I, I'm going to go ahead and pay to prevent that. My opponent can have their portable hole and kill my thing. That's okay with me. I'm not super happy with it, obviously, but it's happening. Okay. Land would, land would be cool. Oligan's Command. I need to do it this turn if I want to pay the Esper Sentinel tax. You just get rid of Esper Sentinel and Colossus Hammer. I think that's okay. So there's my compass. Turn one of these into a mountain. For a target artifact. Do damage to any target. And then I have to pay my tax. So this makes the Urza Saga construct tokens that are coming less threatening. Because they are just easy to kill. <laughs> Ooh. That's very good for me. So I'll go ahead and just junk this creature. Yeah, yeah, you, you have this Cigar's Aid that I know about. So my opponent will make a critter. It's a 2-2. Two, two. This Urza Saga is going to tick up. My opponent will turn it into a 3-3. Three, three. It will become a 4-4 four, four once they search for what I presume is going to be Colossus Hammer. Oh, fuck me. This is not a mana ability. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Uh, now I don't get to cast Unholy Heat this turn. I did, uh, yeah, okay, I guess that was something I didn't play around. Uh, so I take 5 this turn, uh, whereas I was going to take 0. Just I was so focused on stopping the Colossus Hammer that was about to dome me that I just didn't consider that line. Okay, this is good later. It's not good now. Uh, I don't have red mana now. I guess uh, I guess I'm just going this route. I don't have a bobble right now. And I can't cast this Ice Fang Quaddle from the graveyard, both because I don't have enough mana um, and because, like, I'm tapped out. Um, I, I'm scared. Like, this turn is a turn where I can just lose most of my life total if my opponent finds a hammer. Yeah, so I'm taking a minimum of 8 here. Potentially 10 more. Nope, just taking 8. Just taking 8. Okay. Um, this is actually pretty good for me. Oh my god, my opponent has no non-basic lands. My opponent has no non-basic lands, so I can't use this to filter into the color that I need. What a fucking tilt. No. Alright. I thought that was going to, like, allow me to play this Dead of Winter in the not-too-distant future, but that's not actually true. Yeah, get in there. Hope opponent plays a non-basic land so that I can, uh, do stuff. Navigator's Compass being shut off. Absolutely savage. So, again, uh, I, I have zero cards that I can currently cast, uh, that have a meaningful effect. I am... shit. Yep. I can't drown in the lock that. And on holy heat. Uh, this is a very big life swing for my opponent. So this is 11 points of damage to me, and they gain 6 life, kind of invalidating the damage that my Luris has done. Uh, very notably, that Shadow Spear also puts these constructs out of range of just immediately dying. This is 6 damage? 6 damage with Delirium, which I most certainly have. So now I get to choose red or blue. I think I'm going to need to drown in the lock. Drown in the lock, destroy this token. And then my next turn, I can play Ice Fang Coatl and try to hit another land. Um, so that the timing isn't awkward, I'm just going to go ahead and fetch this island now. And I can potentially try to clean up everything with Dead of Winter next turn, depending on how many permanents I can destroy slash my opponent can... Uh, Put into play. Um, yeah, I mean, I need, I need, need, need to just kill this construct token. Ooh, I believe that is a whiff. All right, opponent swings in with both. I will go ahead and drown in the lock and destroy that. Don't do it. Fuck. Yeah. So now I end up dying because they equip to the other creature. Ah, just. So close to kind of bringing this one back. Um, GG's. I can't activate Field of Ruin because my opponent just only has basics. Basics OP. Ban basics. 
So I I guess this Luris card is popular in modern, huh? Just just uh, getting getting the feel like it tends to show up in places. Maybe this is our third round uh, versus Luris in a row. So if we are playing, oh okay, uh, maybe it is not a uh, hammer time this time around. Okay, so we're playing against uh, some sort of yeah. We are going to be playing against some sort of Dragon Rage Channeler Graveyard centric nonsense. Um, that's fine. I, I will uh, probably just unholy heat this Dragon Rage Channeler on my main phase and call that good. My opening hand is not fantastic, by the way. I'm kind of hoping that I end up drawing either a land or a uh, I forgot the name of the card that I care about. Uh, shit. Uh, my mana fixie thing. I am hoping that I draw one of those between my draw steps, my bobble, and my lantern. Um, that's, that's kind of what I accepted when I kept the opening hand. I am not really sure, like, how on earth to mulligan with this deck when, like, Going down the cards feels kind of bad. Flooding out feels kind of bad. Like, I have ultimate endgame level stuff here. And if I hit any land, I get, like, Field of Ruin to fix my mana further. I think it's okay, but it's it's like Sketch. But the, the whole mana base is Sketch, so, you know, that, that is what it is, right? Note that on the play, I probably would have just pitched this hand. All right, I've lost my Culligan's Command to the Thoughtseize. Ooh, this might be some sort of, like, Thought Scour or Consider type card. So I'll play my Lantern. I don't think it matters too much what I take out, because it'll be pretty easy for my opponent to replace anything here. I'm going to take out the creature that my opponent can bring back via Luris. And I will sit on that draw a card until my opponent's turn. Okay, so my opponent's shocked for that. That makes me... So if they didn't just play a cantrip of some kind, that makes me think that they have a... Like a Spell Pierce type card. Alright, that is Luris to hand. I'm going to take a risk here. I am going to draw this card, because I have a billion ways to answer a Luris, but I need, need, need lands. Thank you. Alright, so... I will play my Bobble. Go ahead and turn this into a green, I guess? Black, black, blue, blue, or red, red. Which matters more, blue, blue, or red, red? Probably neither. Attack Blood Crypt. That was the first land that my opponent fetched. So, seems reasonable that they might need that. I'll pick up green. And then I will go ahead and bobble. Alright, opponent has a Ragavan. Um, Ragavan's a little bit of a pain in the ass here because it's something that plays around my... Abundant sorcery speed removal. Okay, I have a Prismatic Vista now, which means I have Snapcaster Unholy Heat or Snapcaster Culligan's Command to help deal with that. I assume that my opponent just goes like Luris and takes their like free card off Bobble while they know it's probably safe. Oh, are we going to see Dash Ragavan instead? Oh wow, we are going to see Dash Ragavan instead. Sure. So I'll take two. <laughs> my opponent found one of my Bobbles. Absolute daggers. Can cantripping Ragavan with a little bonus information. Oh. Alright. That's actually a bit of a problem. They have all this sorcery speed stuff. My and my opponents My opponent is clearing their board. One of those is going to graveyard, one of those is going to hand. Uh not the best. My own Ragavan. I can go ahead and dash my Ragavan. But then I can't Snapcaster on Holy Heat. Yeah, whatever. There's a pretty good chance that I hit something relevant from their deck as well. Like hitting a Thought Season, taking their Luris, for example, would be pretty hot. Nope, I hit a Bloodstained Mire. Okay, so this is three mana. So I do have Snapcaster on Holy Heat on my opponent's turn. I do have Delirium as well. And Holy Heat doesn't exile, does it? No. Death Shadow. That's only a 4-4. Four four. Just kill that with a Data Winner? Or a Maelstrom Pulse? Probably. 
I am relatively certain that I want an island with this. I'm just going to pull that draw out of my deck. A field of ruin. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think I just keep attacking my opponent's mana here. I'll go land and junk these. Yeah, you can float your mana. Um, I'll pick up another swamp because of Luris. Go to a different phase. And I think I am just going to go ahead and take the one for one on this Death Shadow. I don't know. I don't think I want to cast this Ragavan. I think I want to have this Ragavan for if my opponent plays Kroxa and I need something to discard. No, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll cast it. Like, at the end of the day, my opponent is at nine life. Okay. That's fine. If my opponent plays Kroxa, I, I have two removal spells in hand for it. I have the Pulse, and I have the Snapcaster for Unholy Heat. Ooh, opponent fetching and shocking to six so that they can play their Kroxa. I don't know. Like, this potentially leaves me without a removal spell for the Luris that I know about. I was trying to keep my opponent from just casting this Luris by attacking their black mana. Um, don't know that that's actually working here. All right, so I junked this Maelstrom Pulse. I guess I can also just, like, Snapcaster Pulse. Yeah, because I can't leave up this Drown in the Lock in this turn cycle. Yeah, let's just get this most expensive card out of my graveyard here. So, the issue here is that, like, this this Kroxa is recursive. It is it is just going to come back in another couple of turns. Just like Uro, where it's also 5. Oh, shit, it can come back this turn. Alright, so my opponent is opting for Lurus instead. All right, they're going Loris and... Oh, do you not have another black source in your deck? Because otherwise, like, Loris plus Death Shadow and just, like, taking more bodies seems good. Um, also, a little suboptimal sequencing from my opponent there. They could have played Dragon Rage Channeler and then Bobble to get a scry out of that. Okay. So, I don't really know how I'm beating this Croak so long term. I can get rid of this Loris now. And then I can't really put the, the uh, I can't put my own Luris into hand and just leave it there, unless I don't play Prismatic Vista. So that part is obligatory, hundred percent. All right, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the Luris into my hand. I am just a little bit of mana away from like Luris play Luris Soul Guide Lantern. I don't know, maybe maybe I could have started working towards like Luris into Soul Guy and Lantern to take the Crooks out a turn or two earlier and taken some more damage or something like that. My opponent has tapped and untapped a mountain a couple of times. Not sure what exactly they're doing, but they're they've got something to think about. Okay, this is four mana, so it seems like Croxa is happening. Okay, Croxa is happening. Means that I discard this Prismatic Vista, sort of like I planned for. So they were supposed to take the attack with Dragon Rage Channeler pre-combat so that they could hit in for three. I don't have something that immediately answers this Kroxa, so I need to take this Kroxa out of play. I get to either play towards drawing an Unholy Heat or drawing a Ice Fang Coatl, but not both here. Since I have already drawn an Unholy Heat, I'm going to work towards drawing Ice Fang Coatl instead. Yeah, so I, I have to do the bobble if I want to do that, and I'm holding this Ragavan in hand rather than playing it so that I can go ahead ah, oh shit, and keep the card that I spike if I need it to make it around to my main phase again. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Ice Fang Coatl, shit. Alright. So, instead I can just go the route where I... Yeah, fuck. Try to jump block with Ragavan repeatedly using Luris. Um, that line has just been shut off, though. Um, this is probably more or less the end of me. Um, I'm going to discard my Ragavan. Keep Fabled Passage so that I can draw a Dead of Winter and kill a Kroxa that way. Okay. Not dashed. Not dashed, really? Junk my Ragavan. I'll, this doesn't trample. I'll trade this for six life here. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that that answers a croak's a short term. I will. Uh, oh shit! No, it doesn't. It's based on. That was based on my opponent's graveyard, which currently had three cards in it. So I misplayed. 
which caused my opponent to use a counterspell. So... We're gonna say we both are bad at magic. Yeah, um... Oh, I am buried here. This is 9, 10, 11, 12 damage. Uh, so if this Dragon Rage Channeler flips, I'm just dead. Lightning Volt. Okay. Yep. All right. Message message received. Um. So I'm not very good at dealing with Kroxa. I'm good at a lot of the rest of the stuff that my opponent is doing. Like I I can I can beat opposing Lurises. I've shown that already. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess I guess Legion's End tells the Kroxa to fuck off and never come back. Right? Okay. All right. There there's a reason to play that card. Um, I think I just kind of have to go removal dense. I might even just play Graft Digger's Cage because Kroxa is such a problem. Veil of Summer is a thing that I can do. It's good against some of my opponent's stuff. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do it at the correct time consistently because I, I tap out for weird stuff a lot. Like, for example, on turn one, if I have a Navigator's Compass, I really need to play it and not hold up Veil of Summer for a Thought Seize, right? All right, uh, let's go a Cryptic Command out. I need to leave in this lantern for this one. I feel like these Snapcaster Mages are kind of slow. And since I'm bringing in other removal spells, I'm going to go ahead and junk a couple of Drown in the Locks because my opponent's graveyard size is going to fluctuate pretty wildly. Okay. Um, awkward. This is going to be a keep, but I have to like choose what I do with my mana here. I'm going to just go ahead and play the turn 2 Ragavan rather than the turn 2 Ice Fang Coatl. This becomes very awkward if my opponent just thought seizes me and takes the Ragavan, because then I kind of essentially get weird time walked. Motherfuck. <laughs> okay. I mean, they still might not take the Ragavan, right? They took the Ragavan. Alright. I, I need to fetch the red with this so that I have access to more of my colors. I don't think I get to... Uh, like, just fetch either a blue or green and then play Ice Fang on two. Holy fuck. What a top deck. This was one of the things I was thinking about in making that decision, but I actually got rewarded for it. Very nice. All right, so now some of the smaller creatures are not an immediate concern, which is nice. I can play Ice Fang Coatl on my turn and then have, like, Culligan's Command and Dead of Winter at the ready to blow up my opponent's shit. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, yeah, I don't really care about any of the cards in my hand all that much right now. The Ice Fang Coatl is potentially the best card in my hand, but if my opponent takes that, then I just take a turn off to call against command, return it, make my opponent discard or something like that. Okay, yeah, they have taken the, the call against command, settling in for a longer game. Um, so, Fabled Passage is awkward here. In that I would love to use it and return it with Ren and Six, but the land that it produces is tapped. I am going to main phase play Ice Fang Kawaddle and see if I draw an Unholy Heat. No, I do not. The next question is, do I ping my opponent? It makes the Death Shadow bigger, which is a problem because I'm trying to kill it via Dead of Winter next turn. I think I don't ping my opponent. I think I just plus on nothing. Uh, that is a super weird turn cycle. Um, a lot of things can go wrong here. That's fine. It's when the Death Shadow becomes a 5-5 five, five that it's an issue. So it's weird, for example, if they Lightning Bolt themselves. Ooh, okay. So two damage to this, and I discard a card. I will discard a Fabled Passage. Or do I just want to discard an Urza Saga? I am actually just going to discard an Urza Saga, I think. I think I need the constant mana sources as this game goes long. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Ren gets knocked to one, not to zero. Um, so I'm good. So I just get to go fetch, Womp, Dead of Winter for four, killing Death's Shadow, then plus return that Urza Saga back to hand. Okay. Life's a little better than I thought it was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Press it. Oh, dash Ragavan. Okay, dash Ragavan kills run in six. That's fine. I I will eat that damage. And ooh, there's more. Ooh, and a shock. 
Conan is uh going deep in terms of life total here. Rokes uh uh what to discard here is tough. I think it's fabled passage. Uh, this keeps me further away from actually just casting a Lurus, though. And means that I'm not working towards um Uzi What's It on six. Uh uh Dead of Winter on six to answer that. Okay. So I can play Urza Saga now. I have five card types, so I'm good on that front. I'll play Navigator's Compass. And then when my opponent plays Kroxa from Graveyard, I will just unholy heat it, take three damage, not actually really lose out on a card. Okay, so yep. Everything according to plan. Yeah, so here's the Kroxa. And then this is six damage to answer it. I don't actually take any damage here. And my opponent has done so much damage, has now done so much damage to themselves that I'm hoping I just get to finish them off pretty quickly. I can cast a Lurus and put it into play. I don't think that's better than just like getting Lurus in hand and making a token. All right, so that goes to hand. I am just going to go ahead and attack in for one. Uh, if my opponent attacks me with a Ragavan, I think I'm in a situation where I say, like, so be it. Your life total is really low. Okay, I mean, that is not something that impacts the board right now. And the board right now is probably what matters. You can dash that Ragavan. I will just take the hit from it. Yeah, so I, I will go to 15. You can have the treasure. And just hopefully not flip something insane off of my deck. Yeah, that's a very awkward flip for them. That uh, That is not the sweeper they want it to be. Because my opponent has no snow lands. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah, so I just make a construct, make a construct, put another thing in there, and uh, they die. Um, I feel like I have a pretty good set of cards to address what my opponent has going on here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is absolutely a grind, though. Okay, um, I'm going to be keeping my opening hand. There is going to be a lot of ways to play out this hand. Um, because all of the stuff that I play kind of contributes towards, like, different things being good. Um, if my opponent thought seizes me or plays a Ragavan, I'll get a more direct answer to the sort of thing that I need to be doing. Ooh, a Navigator's Compass. That's actually very good. That means that I am... Much, much more willing to just play Prismatic Vista and Unholy Heat this Ragavan. I will wait to do it until my opponent is in combat, though, so my opponent can't just, like, dash in another one. Um, although, if they just play a Thought Seize, I have to respond to it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, this is slightly awkward for me now, in that my opponent could decide to take my Navigator's Compass and make my mana significantly worse. But... The other cards that are in my hand are of significantly higher value. Like, they are just better cards. I'm somewhat likely to just play an Urza Saga on my turn and work towards getting Graft Digger's Cage to stop, like, Kroxa and Luris. Okay, they're going for my Ice Fang. That's fine. Do I have another Ragavan to deal with? I hope not. It is another Ragavan. Okay. So next turn... I probably need to cast a Dead of Winter. I can do that while also playing Urza Saga to work towards Graft Digger's Cage. Negative two, negative two is enough for Ragavan. It's not enough for a Dragon Rage Channeler. I think I want to work towards beating Kroxa and Lurus ASAP. Let's go ahead and do this and do this. It gets awkward, like Culligan's Command is something that can get involved. Like, K-Command, make me discard a card, destroy my compass so I don't have the mana fixing that I need. Uh, like, that is very, very much real. Or my opponent could just hit something from my deck, because I have, like, Assassin's Trophies and my own K-Commands and stuff. Uh, we'll see how bad this is. Okay, Drown in the Lock, that's totally fine. Okay, another land. Just Luris to hand? Okay, Luris to hand, fantastic. Alright, uh, that is a Maelstrom Pulse. Just want to make a token? You could straight up just make a 2-2 token. Okay. Set of Winter is now really awkward, because, like, I can make tokens to not use a card on the Ragavan. Hmm. But doing so means that I play more into this Dead of Winter. 
I, I guess I'm fine just trading a token for the Ragavan, allowing my opponent to replay it, and then playing Dead of Winter my following turn. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. Uh, we're we're settling in for a long game, though. Okay, there's more land from my opponent. See if they have something like an Unholy Heat to force the Ragavan through this turn. I am just good trading. I know I could just take two here and like use my life total as a resource, but... I'm good with my opponent casting this Lurus, replaying the Ragavan, and then I get my two for one with Dead of Winter. Well, it's more of a two for one, right? Like, it's a one for one that gets the Lurus permanently out of my opponent's hand. Okay, so here is Lurus. So then my opponent will fetch Shock and play Ragavan. Ooh, that is black instead. What does that mean? Death's Shadow. Oh, Death's Shadow and Ragavan. Okay. Yeah, so I am not going to get to kill the Death Shadow with my Dead of Winter. I think that's fine. I think I just take the Lurus and the Ragavan this turn with it and call that good. I am going to grab the Grafdigger's Cage. I am worried about a Kroxa. I'll just play this land and that into my Swamp. All right, so there's a bunch of the stuff answered. and. Kroxas are less scary. I can now Pulse or Assassin's Trophy this away and just kind of treat Motherfucker. That was a, that was a pretty good two damage cantripping burn spell, if I uh, do say so myself. I had not seen the dress downs yet. Did not know that was something that I needed to uh, be playing around. All right. So again, though, my opponent could have played Dragon Rage Channeler or, or no, they might have drawn the Dragon Raid Channeler off the, the Dress Down. Okay. Um, I just need to use my more expensive card this turn. So I will go ahead and Maelstrom Pulse this Death Shadow. I don't love leaving the Dragon Rage Channeler in play, but the difference of one point of life is pretty huge here because of Lightning Bolt? Yeah. So I can't actually fetch with this Fabled Passage or this Prismatic Vista now. I'm going to have to take three from this, hope my opponent doesn't have uh, like a, another Kroxa or Lightning Bolt to go to my dome, and then I have to Assassin's Trophy this. Um, I, I will lose to a removal spell if I try to dash Ragavan. Not willing to do that here. So I need to turn this into a Swamp blow that up. I will cast this Ragavan. And I guess if I gain some life later, I want to have this Prismatic Vista in hand to potentially discard to a Kroxa to protect some other card. Um, life is not great for me. I also have to think about whether or not I want to hold back my own Ragavan in order to play around a dash Ragavan from my opponent. But I think I need to just like take this hit and like get my opponent closer to dead. All right, they're at seven. Holy expressive iteration, Batman. Okay, this is almost... I just like... Play, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Good, good card is good. I right, put one of these cards into my hand. I'll put a Dead of Winter into my hand. Put one of these cards into the bottom of my library, that Dead of Winter. A exile the Renin 6. Cast the Renin 6. Plus Ren and Six to return Urza Saga. Play Urza Saga as my land drop. Hope not to die. Alright. Opponent doing uh what I assume is some marginal deck thinning here. Yep. 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 Well, we played around the Kroxa. Uh... Oh wait, hold on, this doesn't actually hit me, right? As long as I discard a card. Okay, yep. All right, so because I have cards in hand now, that's actually okay. We may be in this yet. Assassin's Trophy, uh, that means I'm relatively safe against a lot of stuff now. Okay, so I hit for two. Puts my opponent to four. Another expressive iteration? I mean, yes. All right, I will put this play, right? I guess I'll put the Ragavan. 
Actually, I really just want the lands. The other Ragavan doesn't matter too much. So I'll uh, put the mountain into exile. I'll play the mountain. I will ping you with Ren and Six. That way I have lethal between these two things next turn, and I'm still holding up Assassin's Trophy. So I can end of turn make a Construct token. Otherwise, I have Assassin's Trophy for something like a Ragavan that comes in. Holy shit. Uh, that was tight. GG's. All right, final round here, and we are not paired against a Luris deck, so we will get a little bit of variety this time around. Um, I don't think I want to play an Urza Saga on turn one. I think I just want to uh, go ahead and get my trusty dusty compass going. So I'll uh, take my life. Uh, there will be a real question as to whether or not I start like trying to go aggro on turn two with my Urza Saga here. All right. So, do, like, do I want this turn to be hold up a Drown in the Lock, which probably can't do anything, or cast Ice Fang Kowaddle, or just, like, get Urza Saga going? I think I just want to get Urza Saga going and cycle this Soul Guide Lantern. Uh, although, I really want a Field of Ruin my opponent's Urza Saga next turn, right? Uh, so I guess that means I just play Prismatic Vista and, uh, like, start going that route. Okay. Oh. All right, so let's fetch black, maybe? Like, working towards double color for Luris. I think so. All right, let's see what we draw here. A Snapcaster Mage. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Field of Ruin. Junk the Urza Saga with more counters on it, so my opponent doesn't get to immediately tutor. Grab a land of some kind. Okay, my so my opponent does have basics. So I'll play a Soul Guide Lantern. Just junk that. And given that my opponent is playing green, I think I just go ahead and uh, do that. My opponent can get Urza Saga Constructs if they have more lands to play. I'm not sure what deck is playing Vesuva and Urza Saga in Modern. Whatever this is, I haven't seen it before. Oh, okay. All right, so... JK, I, I, I know what's up now. So we are playing against Amulet Titan. I have no idea how well I am going to play against this deck. Like, I have not played against this deck in quite some time. Uh, Ren and Six for repeated land destruction, though, sounds pretty dope. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm good with this. Sorry, my, ma my mana situation is kind of tough. I think I'm supposed to play Urza's Saga here. Turn Urza's Saga into a red producing land. Plus on the Field of Ruin from here. And then hold back Ice Fang Kowaddle while also holding up Drown in the Lock. The Drown in the Lock is a little awkward right now because my opponent has literally zero permanence in Graveyard, but they're about to put their Urza's Saga there. Um, so, like, that's a. Uh, that's a thing. All right, so I assume they're just going to make a construct token here. Yep. We'll see what they decide to search up. I assume it's just going to be another amulet, and they'll try to do amulet things and produce a primeval titan and make me cry. Yep. So my opponent gets to, like, tap, untap, tap, untap this Simic Growth Chamber, which is pretty strong. They're only up to four mana right now. Oh. So... Do I need to counter this bad-looking card so that they can't get up to Primeval Titan mana? I believe that I do. Uh, this was very much not my plan for this card. But I think if I let my opponent go tap on tap and they just get Primeval Titan this turn, it's super bad for me. All right, so they are transmuting to Laria West into a Cavern of Souls. It's no big deal. No big deal. I'm not scared. Are you scared? I'm not scared. All right. So Ice Fang Kowaddle trades for one of these constructs. All right. Um, life is scary. Navigator's Compass is not really what I'm super, super looking for. I think it's okay. Like a Field of Ruin. I think I need to keep my opponent off of higher amounts of mana. So I'll blow that up. Um, I don't have like a red source yet without using Compass. So I guess I'll grab one of those. So now I can make a Construct token that is the same size as my opponent's Constructs. 
And I'll just go ahead and return this Field of Ruin again for the future. I kind of wish I had one more mana so that I could also like play this Navigator's Compass and make my Construct not trade with their Construct, but beat their Construct. But uh, you can't have it all. Alright, so there's the Cavern, which I assume names Giant for Primeval Titan. Ooh, it names Beast. Okay, so it attacks in at Renin 6. Uh, do I just take this hit on the Renin 6 and then keep my larger Constructs around? Or do I just clear that? I'm relatively close to just ultimating this creature. I think I'm I think I'm gonna keep my loyalty on my Ren and Six. Unsure if that's correct. But I, I kinda have this soft lock of repeatedly field of ruining my opponent. Ooh, a K command is cool. Alright, I I will go ahead and just make my critter. I don't really need more cards right now. I think I'm just gonna take an artifact that sits in play, gives me a little life. I will Field of Ruin this, and again, just kind of go and increase my artifact count a little bit higher, plus return that Field of Ruin again, and call it a turn. Oh shit, I probably needed to hold the Field of Ruin, actually, because since they have a second basic forest, they can just, like, play on tap, play on tap. Yeah, shit, I need to hold back the Field of Ruin this time. Now they can just grab a Primeval Titan. Yeah, I fucked that up. I haven't played against this deck in a very, very long time. Ooh. That gives them an additional land drop. Okay. So they get two untaps to float their mana. I'm going to have... What the hell is this? Okay. Power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. When it ETBs, you can put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. What the fuck? What the f Oh, oh. What? Oh. I have never been sexually attracted to a green creature before, but... My god. What? Oh. Um... Yeah, honestly, I'm just happy for my opponent here. Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna... Yep, yep. I'm not gonna make them work through that. You you, you got this game. Holy shit. Eat your heart out, Primeval Titan, I guess. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, uh, that, that's why Cavern was on Beast, I guess. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna beat my opponent if they start doing that shit. Um... My actual factual counter spells are probably good, as are my drown in the locks. Dead of Winter can sweep some of this stuff on turns where I don't just literally die. I think I need the Assassin's Trophy to blow up lands. I think I need the EEs and maybe even the Force of Vigors to answer opposing, opposing uh, amulets and construct tokens and whatnot. Actually, for construct tokens, is Legion's End just for Urza Saga construct tokens? Just gets both. And maybe what it's for. All right, so I've got things that I can think about. I do not need Soul Guide Lantern. I think my Ragavans are okay on the play. The thing is, in that game, like I had Field of Ruin Recursion, and it just like was not good enough. Well, actually, maybe I just didn't play optimally. That kind of felt like things were going to tilt in favor of my opponent over time. I don't know. So like, I have Urza Saga Construct tokens to worry about. I also need to just like kill my opponent. Ragavan is going to get stonewalled by two fours and Urza Saga Construct tokens. I still probably need it. I don't know how I'm supposed to sideboard. I think I want to get rid of all my Unholy Heats. I think this Cryptic Command is going to be slow and hard to cast. This is probably... Meh. These Snapcasters are slow, but it's a way to recur Assassin's Trophy, Maelstrom Pulse, and whatnot. I need to keep Call Against Command. It blows up artifacts. Uh, This is legitimately tough to figure out how I'm supposed to board. You go down another Dead of Winter. I don't know. Maybe I shave Ragavan. I don't know. It's so good when I'm on the play. Maybe I just do something like that and call that good. Uh, this is many copies of Drown in the Lock. Opponent has Cavernous Souls in their deck. I think this hand is medium. I'm going to try to fish for something that's a little better. Uh, I mean, this has Land Destruction. I can't cast said Land Destruction, but it has Land Destruction. I guess I keep this. And kind of hope that this land, this hand improves itself. Um, kind of expecting to just lose, though. 
Okay. I assume that's an amulet. Yep. All right, I've got a bobble, so that's a redraw towards something that matters. That's a summoner's pact. Sure, sure, sure. I really don't want to start losing lands this early, but if I don't get fixing, then I think I need to get my... Ooh. Is that worth two cards right now? I think since I can't cast any of these, it is worth two cards. I'm going to pitch my Assassin's Trophy here. It's less mana, but the pulse just destroys... Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess if if I if I wait and then my opponent just like plays a land, untaps some stuff, and starts vomiting things, it's like very much not good for me. All right, that's rough. So that shuts off my Urza Saga. Yeah. Okay. I have Maelstrom Pulse for an Amulet next turn. I guess I can play Prismatic Vista this turn. I'm pretty sure that I want Swamp, but this leaves me the opportunity to. Fetch up. Yep. That's gonna get that's gonna get pulsed next turn. Uh the problem is this turn though. Okay, so that castle gets to untap. I guess I'm just always yielding to these. At least for right now. And then my opponent can make this dryad uncounterable and get an extra land drop. Uh so some bad things can happen here basically. Ooh, bad things did not happen. Uh, my Urza Saga is pithing needled, so I can't uh, make a construct with it. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and fetch out my swamp here. Load of mana. Uh, I don't have some of my colors yet, so I am just going to grab a compass, take my life, play a land, and pulse away both amulets. So my opponent currently has a threat on board, but it is a relatively insignificant threat in the grand scheme of things. Oh, another one? Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, okay, so it is another Dryad. Cavern can now be moved to a different creature type, I'm guessing. Okay, Giant, so for Primeval Titan. Sure. Okay, um, my situation is bad. So if this is just going on giant and making it uncounterable anyway, I think I just need to try and potentially hit my land drop right here and uh, go towards something that matters more. Sure. All right. So I am holding up counter spells or a removal spell here. I can drown in the lock one of these, but like if they have both of them in play, getting rid of one of them doesn't matter very much. If my opponent attacks in, though, and then I can just drown in the lock and kill the other one in combat, that's not too bad for me. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is amazing for me. No, no, fuck. Yeah, okay, yes, thank you. So I will block this one. What is this? Oh shit, their lands are all types. Right. This is fine. I am going to need to top deck another removal spell, I think. Alright, so I'm just going to grab a mountain, turn this into an island, and then I kind of set up for a situation where I can top deck another removal spell and then kill this. Not that removal spell, though. Uh, I don't have a creature in graveyard to return, huh? I guess I'm just going to take this card from my opponent. You discard a card. I will destroy this Pithing Needle. I think this is potentially better than just holding up the counter spell. Yeah, because that's that's the Summoner's Pact that I knew about. Uh, I guess I'm just attacking with this. That's the Summoner's Pact that I knew about from that Bobble a few turns pack back, so that did represent just uncounterable Primeval Titan. Um, I need to do something about like either this or this. Three mana for what? Four mana. Uh, six mana. Seven mana. Play around the creature that was going to be... Oh, they just... Oh my god, they, they whiffed. Or wait, how does this work? Okay, yeah, they didn't have any lands in hand. Okay, so this would have been counterable, but I dodged a Primeval Titan by doing things the other way. Uh, it's going to have double strike, so I can't just kill it with my Death Toucher. 
Uh, they're drawing an Urza Saga. Uh, I can put this Lurus into my hand, but then I lose out on the ability to do something like play an instant speed removal spell. I don't think I'm going to put the Lurus into my hand. Uh, Legion's End. Okay versus the Urza Saga construct token that I'm about to face down, but I, like, my Ice Fang Coatl eats it here. Then I take 12 damage from this, another 2 from this. Uh, yeah. Uh, I am dead. Yeah, so that's, that's the Sun Home activation, uh, which puts me to 4. Yeah, uh... GG's uh, could not quite get there. We get some of our play points back. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Cool name. As we thought, somewhat questionable mana base. The deck idea is super cool. Like using Navigator's Compass to fill that Astrolabe slot so that you can just play all of the best stuff. Uh, but in, in practice, a lot of the opening hands ended up clunky and I felt like there was considerable risk to what I was doing. Now, once the game drags on and I can start doing like Urza Saga and Luris stuff, uh, I, I felt like the deck was powerful once it got going, but there's a lot of stumbling in the initial turns. If I were going to play this again, I think I would probably cut these three cards for some more things to get me out of the gates in the early game. Like once you get to the point where you're casting K commands and like you're recurring things with Ren and Six and you're doing Lurus shenanigans, I don't think you need this stuff. And the Cryptic is going to be really hard to cast anyway. I don't think that card is super, super necessary. I can understand wanting to have like a generic bounce card in game one, but like Maelstrom Pulse and Assassin's Trophy and Culligan's Command can probably take care of most of the stuff that you need to take care of. Um, so I would be looking to get rid of those things. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I feel like I had a relatively decent set of cards. Um, I've never really liked Veil vale of Summer in Modern. I, I feel like the format is high enough paced that I don't want to be just sitting there and holding up that mana. Um, but then people in the comments always tell me, like, you can play it slower. So, I don't know. Um, I, I might be looking at replacing Veil vale of Summer with something else, uh, but maybe that's just my play style. Anyway, if you made it this far in the video, you know, please throw me a like or a comment. Those sorts of things support me for free and actually mean more than you know. Have a great rest of the day if it's Thanksgiving for you all. Uh, again, hope it's great for you, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!